Hi everybody, I know it's been a minute and I don't have much daylight and I wanted to um, just um, get into a little bit more of Thus Says God's Word on Sleep and I know I'm a little early today but um, I'm going to rest in a little bit. Um, and for those of you who do know, I had surgery on the 19th and that surgery went well. I am home recuperating. And I didn't do Thus Says God's Word last Thursday, so I promised God I would go ahead and sit up and get back to business. Um, I thank God for all He's done for me. I thank Him for all the things that He is doing, has done, and continues to do. I want to thank the people who have been so loving, so caring, um, and supporting me through all of my uh, what I would call life's challenges you know sometimes we think hey you know life is gonna be wonderful all the time but sometimes life throws you some lemons and you just gotta run for the sugar and make lemonade so tonight thus says God's word is gonna be on sleep and I apologize for those of you who I'm doing it a little early and you used to have me either 8 or 9 o'clock. But I'm going to do it early this time because I'm, I'm a little tired so I'm going to get into bed early. But what about you guys who haven't had sleep? What about people who just cannot wind down? What about individuals who have a hard time and even some individuals have to use medication just to close their eyes and go to sleep. So I wanted to deal with that particular chapter in the saith God's word. This is um, an actual reading book that I'm reading uh, with by Dorothy Wayman. And I was studying because these are scriptures for counselors who counsel people. And I'm a life coach and I've been in business for 10 years. And when I came across this information and God really was working with me on, you know, it's okay to have, you know, the technical and the physical things that happen when you're missing sleep. But what does God say about sleep? And, you know, I was just real interested in, wow, you know, God has something to say about everything. And we just <laughs> kind of ask him and know what scriptures to go to in order to be able to kind of see what God is doing about sleep. I know a lot of people, especially my mom, you know, she is taking care of my grandmother who's 92 who has dementia. And, you know, if anybody's ever taken care of an elderly parent with dementia, sleep sometimes throughout the night is not possible because you're just, you know, if they get up, if you know, you have to be kind of on guard if they're you know, hauling in to sleep, having nightmares, or, you know, whatever's going on, you, you're not going to get sound sleep because you're constantly a caregiver. So, I wanted to have uh, everybody know that I just have a lot of compassion for those of you who are taking care of elderly parents. Um, there's a lot of people taking care of elderly parents. But let's see what God says about sleep today. So, in the saith God's word, it talked about millions of, you know, tranquilizers and sleeping pills are being taken every night for people to induce sleep and put themselves at least in a tranquil state so they can get some rest. Um, but what we don't understand is sometimes it may be things happening in our head. You know, it may be things going on in our mind that we aren't at rest. It could be things we're worried about, whether it's bills, whether it's children, whether it's our job, whether it is um, just our health in general. We're worried about those things, so it doesn't, when we go to sleep, it, our mind is not at rest. And it could be something as simple as your mind trying to keep up with a grocery store list. Things that you need to do, like a list of things that you need to do, and it's keeping you from getting sound sleep. So one of the uh, scriptures that God says read is Acts 24, 16. 
uh, in getting sleep, Acts 24, 16 says, Herein do I examine myself to have always a conscious void of offense toward God and toward men. And another scripture is 1 John 1, 9. And that is, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is saying, if you're not sleeping, there's some sin present that you're not dealing with. And because he's made us so, our conscience is present. And even though we don't pay attention to our conscience sometimes when we're sinning, it's still there and it can be keeping you from getting rest. Another scripture is John 1.12. As many as received him, to, get, to them gave he power to become the Son of God, even to them that believe on his name. And some people don't even believe in God. Some people don't have that belief system. So your worry is probably going to be 10 times greater than the worry of a person who actually has a belief system that this too shall pass, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and that God will take care of that that I can't take care of. I remember the serenity prayer, you know, says God give me the wisdom, you know, to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference, right? But if you don't know the difference, sometimes we, we worry about things that really is in God's domain. Let's go to Psalms 37, and this is the 7th and 8th verse. Now, this is good. Rest in the Lord and unite patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath. And I'm telling you, honey, you know, that wrath thing is something else. You know, when you when you trying to revenge, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, stay away from that. That's God's domain. Uh, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to the devil. Um, a lot of times, jealousy, envy, you know the seven deadly sins, gluttony. I mean, that's just so much that we deal with on a daily basis. And we don't really deal with why it's happening or who it's, you know, what's causing you not to sleep. But just know that if God made your body and your mind and your spirit and your consciousness, if we make choices that are out of the will of God, then you're not going to get rest. If you are still trying to be God, control, and not allow, and still try to worry instead of just trust, and, still, and then try to, you know, do things to others because they've hurt you, Instead of not seek revenge, but just trust the Lord and let the Lord have the vengeance. You'd be surprised on why people are not sleeping. I promise you there's a reason why. If you're not sleeping, there's a lot happening in your conscience and your subconscious that's keeping you from sound sleep. Some people can't sleep by themselves. And, you know... That's because you have attachment issues and abandonment issues. And if you don't get those issues handled whenever you're not with a person, you're going to have trouble sleeping. Like you'll be up all night looking at the ceiling talking about, looty do, looty do, I can't sleep. I don't know why because I'm tired, but I can't sleep. Because you're used to having a person, a body as comfort. So keep that in mind also. Here's another scripture that may be helpful. Uh, Psalms 4, 8. I will both lay, down, me, lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only maketh me 
to dwell in safety. Some people can't sleep because they're not in safety. Uh, they're, they're trying to figure out if they're going to get hit upside the head if they close their eyes. They, they don't know what type of spouse or what their spouse are going to do when they get home or when they get up. You know, and then if you if you were like me several years ago, uh, where you were in relationship with an addict, that was a whole nother ball game. So, you know, there's reasons if you're not sleeping, there are reasons why you're not sleeping. And I'm just trying to shed some light on what God says about it, as well as make sure you understand how to get some sleep. So, sleep. If you're wanting to get sleep, here's what you need to do. It's very simple, and I promise you. It will work even tonight if you just do this. Take out a pen and a piece of paper. Write down everything that's bothering you in your mind. Write down everything you're trying to keep up with. Write down everything that you're trying to uh, change. Write down everything that you're grappling with because you can't control it. Write down everything that you are that your mind is occupying your subconscious and your conscious with. Write it down. Keep writing until you cannot write anymore. And write down how you feel about it. But just keep writing. And once you've gotten to the point where you're just completely empty and you cannot write anymore, lay your pad down. Say a prayer. Just say a prayer to the Lord. And then read your Bible. I promise you, you will go to sleep. Just pick a chapter. If you if pick uh, Proverbs, if you want to pick Proverbs and do like what I'm going to do starting May 1st, which is Saturday, I'm going to read a verse every day from Proverbs uh, so that I can start just, you know, getting into the Word and getting in the habit of reading a verse out of the Bible every single day as opposed to every other day or, you know, when I think about it. But once you write all those things down and put it on pad and paper, guess what? Your mind doesn't have to keep up with it. The only reason why you're unrest is because your mind is still trying to figure it out. Your mind is still trying to keep up with it. And your mind is still trying to figure out how you can do, how you can do what you need to do. So if you write it down, I promise you, write till you can't write anymore. You will get great super duper sleep I promise you it'll happen make sure you have some water by your bed and make sure you do do your prayer after you get through writing and you will sleep like a baby so just trust God just trust him just say Lord I give it to you I've grappled with this thing long enough he ain't gonna never come back and if he do come back, fine. But if he don't come back, I'm just going to trust you. You know, there's a lot of relationship issues. My son is, is you know, doing this or doing that. My daughter's doing that. You got to give those things to the Lord. Stop grappling with this stuff. You're out of your domain. You can't change it. There's nothing you can do about it. And you have to give it over to the Lord so you can sleep. So you're in choice. By, about why you're not sleeping so make sure just get your pad get your pen and start writing and it could be something as simple as I gotta remember this that and the other to do tomorrow write it down because as soon as you let it go on paper your mind lets it go and I promise you you will sleep so thank you for joining it's all about you tonight with thus says God word on sleep Thank you for allowing me to be a little earlier than I normally am. And I'm going to get some sleep tonight, too. So thank you again for joining. I will see you next Thursday. Have a great night. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And if you still need some assistance, remember, I'm your coach. Give me a call, 336-618-1670. Be my pleasure to listen to you. Have a great night.